Cindy, are there any videos about training pet terriers? That's the question that came in that led on to this whole series of questions and answers that we're going to talk about. Because the fact is that Cindy goes back and says, all of our dog training is suited for all breeds of dogs. It's a myth to think that you have to treat a terrier different than you have to train a German Shepherd or, or to train a Chihuahua different than you have to train a Rottweiler. Dogs are dogs. They vary. You have to train the dog that you have. And I say in my videos, you need to work with the dog that's sitting in front of you. Every single dog is different and you need to be able to have some tools in your toolbox to deal with the temperament, the drive, and the personality of the dog you're working with. And granted, there can be dogs, terriers, that can be a little independent. There can be dogs, but just as importantly, there can be terriers that are just little hellfires that are out there and full of drive and want to play with you and doing everything they can to get you to play with them. But you don't treat a breed of dogs, you don't try and train a breed of dogs differently than you train other dogs. Cindy goes on to say that terriers can be slightly harder to motivate for some activities compared to a typical herding or sporting breed. Yeah, that's true. But it still comes down to working with the dog in front of you and learning how to motivate dogs. And you're gonna motivate in certain ways and it all will depend on the dog you have in front of you and what you have to do to get the dog motivated. Cindy said, I've trained my terrier and my Shih Tzu with the exact same methods that I use for my Malinois and my German Shepherd. And that's exactly the truth. It's exactly what I was just saying, only she says it quicker. Sometimes they say, I ramble too much. I guess I do. Uh, then the user response came back. Thank you, Cindy. I guess my issue is with equipment. He's developing an aversion. He has an aversion to his harness and his leash. Uh, the dog is a 15-week-old 15, 15 Welsh Terrier. So it's a puppy, just a little puppy. He's very mellow and self-confident. That's nice. I have a hard time developing a lasting bond with him. Well, you don't develop a lasting bond with a 15-week-old puppy. Uh, things go well, but lately, this week, if I start the day with putting the harness on him, he turns off. It fits well. Even the collar and the leash have triggered resistance and pulling. Lots of avoidance and in interaction with me. I just received a halty, gentle leader and look to introduce that to him, but I'm afraid of frustrating him too much. <laughs> Cindy said, this sounds familiar. I had a corgi that was exactly like that years ago, Morgy the corgi. She's unfortunately passed, and she passed when she was 14 years old. We still miss her. My border terrier, was also extremely sensitive as a puppy, independent but sensitive, so I had to really read her body language. And that's where Cindy's talking about learning how to deal with the dog that you have sitting in front of you. Cindy said, I put the equipment on my puppy and I don't really use it. And that's a good idea for this lady. Put a collar on, uh, put a harness on, let the puppy wear it when it's feeding. Let the puppy, when it's in the house, drag the leash around. And we recommend a, a drag leash or a long paracord. We sell a number of different types of leashes that a, a puppy can pull around that don't have handles on them that are gonna hook on things. But with that said, when a dog or a puppy is using a drag leash, it's your job to keep your eye on it all the time because it can easily, easily snag on a piece of furniture and pull something over. She said, uh, 
I let them, with supervision, just walk around with me, dragging the leash, making sure that it's very lightweight. We offer excellent lightweight drag leashes, puppy leashes. For puppies that do show avoidance, I get out the equipment, I hold it, and I don't put it on. Or I'll get the equipment out, I'll hold it, and I'll give the puppy high value food rewards. And a high value food reward for the millionth time in all of the videos that I film and all the training videos I produce, high value food reward is not a piece of the dog's kibble. It's a little piece of something that, that, uh, that your puppy thinks is the best thing in the world it's ever had. Be it a little piece of hot dog, a little piece of last night's uh, steak. And when I mean little, it, on a puppy it doesn't have to be much bigger than that. So, so basically what she's saying is, your puppy needs to be hungry when you're going to do this work, so maybe do it before you feed him. So the puppy's hungry, you get the, you get the harness out, lay it there, give the puppy food. And it doesn't have to, it can be more than one piece of food. You can jack, we call it jackpotting, when you give the puppy two or three or four pieces of food in a row. You don't want to get into a situation in training, and we cover this in our training videos, where the dog does something, the dog does something we ask it to do, we give it a piece of high value food reward, and we've trained the dog, we're only gonna give him one, so it gets one and then it's bored. What else is there to do around here that's more interesting than Ed? But if you learn how to jackpot them and vary how many rewards you give them, uh, then they stay engaged with you. They stay motivated to pay attention to you. The point here too is that there's no hurry in trying to get your dog trained. Take the time that it takes to do it correctly. 15 weeks is a drop in the lifetime of your dog's life. I mean, your dogs, hopefully they're gonna live to be 12, 13, 14 years old, never long enough. But you've, what's 15 weeks compared to 15 years? It's nothing. So keep your dogs on leash. So many people take dogs off leash too quickly. And it carry, have high value food rewards sitting around in your house so you can grab them. Call the puppy over, give them a little food reward. You can become the dog's best friend on how you react and how you interact with your dog. Don't expect to have a machine, a dog that's trained to do everything perfectly, when it's 15 weeks old. Don't even expect it when it's six months old. Don't even expect it when it's a year old, when it's still a puppy. And figure out what you can do to motivate your puppy to want to be with you. Get, that, get the harness out, put the harness on him. Take it off. Every time you put it on, give him a treat. Don't give him a treat when you take it off because then it's motivating him to get that darn thing off of him. Give him the treat when you're putting him on. There's nothing wrong with that. Clip the leash on, give them a food reward, praise them. Same thing when I, when I take my dogs out, I'm, I'm rambling on here to another topic, but I still have to say it about puppies because we want our puppies to pee on command. So every time I take my puppy out and they pee, I say, good puppy, or good potty, good potty, good potty. How many times a day does a dog pee, a puppy pee? A lot, if you're taking them out enough. So let's say they pee. 10 times in a day. Well, then you're saying, good potty, good potty. Then let's say you're doing it in a, for a week. Well, that's 70 times a week. You're saying, good potty, good potty. Did I transgress into something they shouldn't have been talking about there? Probably, Cindy would say. Uh, she goes on to say here, and it's important, do not worry about teaching a puppy or a young dog or any rescue dog obedience before you have developed your relationship with your dog. The most important thing you can do with a dog is to develop a relationship. It's not to train the dog. You can, we call it manage. You can manage a dog that's not trained. How do you manage a dog that's not trained? You keep them on a leash. You don't let them get into bad things. You don't let them practice bad behavior. How can a dog pee right in front of you in your house, a puppy even, if you have him on leash and you're paying attention to him. Because if you, you're gonna learn what their body language is before they pee, and you get, ah, 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 pick them up and run them outside, okay? 
So good management is way, 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 way more important than training behaviors. Behaviors, if you establish your relationship with your dog, training behaviors is going to be easy because the relationship is going to have engagement with you and your dog. Your puppy is going to want to be with you. It likes being with you. And you're going to teach it that, okay, do this, and I'll give you a little piece of food for doing that. They learn really, really quick. So let's see what else Cindy says. You may want to get a tiny snap or very thin paracord and fashion it to a line attached to the puppy's collar. We talked about that. Traditional leashes are often too heavy for little puppies, and that can suppress their drive. And that's very true. In other words, I think we sell, hands down, the best Amish-made Latigo leather six-foot lead in the world. And I've been selling them for 25 years, but it's too heavy for a puppy. We make puppy leashes, leather puppy leashes that don't have handles. So then the person comes back and it's nice. It says, I've actually lost sleep over this because I think I've missed crucial development stages already and poisoned his attitude with what I've already done. Thank you so much for your advice. I feel like I'm a better, I feel like I'm better equipped and I just discovered Learbird yesterday. <laughs> Cindy has a good point here. She said, dogs and puppies are very resilient, and they really are. And we've all been in your shoes. We want to do the right thing. We want to put energy into creating a relationship with the dog. The training material that we have is going to help you create a dog that loves to be with you. So take a little bit of time and look at some of the courses that we've put together. We have courses on how to build a relationship with your dog. That's one of them that I would recommend for this person. We have another one on your puppy, eight weeks to eight months that I did. In the end, our goal is to produce training material that's going to show you how to develop a puppy that loves to learn. And if you can get that, training them to do behaviors is simple and it's fun, and that's what we want for our dogs. We want our dogs to love to be with us. We want our dogs to love to go out and do training because it's fun for them, and they know it's fun for us too.